Hello, I'm Jonas Rewinski. You're watching Break the Fake. They make them, we break them. And tell you all you need to know. After the Friday terrorist attack on Crocus Hall near Moscow, which at the time of recording this episode killed 137 and wounded over 140, the United Kingdom and Germany warned against seeing Russia as a victim. Responsibility for the attack was claimed by ISIS-K, a branch of the Islamic State based in the historical region known as the Khorasan province. However, this is not really the essence of the problem. We emphasize with the innocent victims of terrorism in Moscow, but we must remember that Russia is itself a terrorist state, which continues to launch brutal attacks with missiles and drones targeting civilians all across Ukraine, looking to strike fear into the hearts of innocents. And there are countless examples recently, a hydroelectric power plant on the Dnipro, for example, or Kiev, a few days in a row, you name it. You saw terror. You reap terror, said Michael Roth, chair of the Committee on Foreign Affairs in the Bundestag, in an interview with the German newspaper Bild am Sonntag, and it is hard to disagree. Well, it turns out that the regime can quickly start lobbing false accusations, backed by zero proof, against those it deems undesirable. But when it comes to identifying, finding and neutralizing actual terrorists, it's powerless, even though they did nothing to conceal their identities, acting without masks, in a venue packed with CCTV equipment. No, this task is too much for the Imperial Russian machine and its cogs. That's not what they are trained for. Catching terrorist suspects is just not the same thing as twisting the arms of students protesting in city squares or cuffing 71-year-old human rights activists. No, that would require a whiff of investigative ability, aside from the ability to use brute force and unquestioningly obey orders. The whole situation just screams terrorism prevention. We don't do that here. And the results are as predictable as they are terrifying. What is more, the investigation would be very straightforward in this case, given the fact that some two weeks ago, Washington warned Russian state security about documents suggesting that the Islamic State was preparing to stage a terrorist attack on the Russian soil. Now, Russia responded by laughing the whole thing off, because heeding the warning of people who, to use Moscow's own propaganda narrative, maintained biolabs in Ukraine, would have produced way too many cracks in the official Kremlin narrative. Specifically, Russian newspaper Kommersant is reporting that no Russian Federation official has confirmed ever receiving such a warning, which means that nothing could be done to prevent the attack. But then again, just three days ago, Putin called the terror attack warnings Western blackmail. In any normal country, such a statement, followed by an actual incident resulting in hundreds of victims, would have led to an immediate resignation and perhaps even criminal investigation for failing to discharge one's duty to protect the country's citizens. But since it's Russia we're talking about, the concept of accountability is about just as popular there as President Joe Biden at a MAGA convention. Напомню и о недавних, прямо скажем, провокационных заявлениях ряда официальных западных структур о возможности терактов в России. Все это напоминает откровенный шантаж и намерение запугать, дестабилизировать наше общество. But this is not the only ridiculous thing about the whole affair. As soon as news of the attack began to spread on social media, the Kremlin's mouthpieces were already formulating accusations suggesting Ukraine was culpable. Even when the attackers were detained and responsibility was claimed by the Islamic State, the regime didn't change its tune at all. Ukraine was guilty, period. No one is going to tell Putin who the terrorists are. He knew that before the attack even happened. But what about proof? Well, apparently, the attackers were fleeing in the direction of the border with Ukraine. Now that is a rather counterintuitive claim for a guy believing himself to be something of a security expert. For the past two years, Russia has been waging a full-scale war against Ukraine, and the borderlands are packed full of enemy units, intelligence and security operatives and also law enforcement officers. According to Ukrainian military intelligence spokesman Andriy Yusov, the border is also heavily mined and surveilled using all possible means by both Russia and Ukraine. Hours after the incident, the FSB detained 11 suspects, including four men that were quickly named as the attackers. 
For the past two days, Russian news websites have been uploading video footage and pictures showing interrogators torturing the alleged attackers with electric shocks and even cutting off the ear of one of the suspects. Which sounds disturbingly like what Islamic State militants do on a daily basis. I mean, the whole Russia is ISIS with snow meme didn't come out of nowhere, you know. Meanwhile, the Kremlin's chief inadvertent comedian Vladimir Solovyov continues spinning his frenzied tales of conquering Europe. So, without further ado, let's see who made his personal shortlist this time around. Ждите нас, хрюнцузы, ждите, недолго осталось. Скоро придем. И я понял, что вот такие. Но мне сначала надо через Берлин. Альбов? А через кома? Не, не, сначала Берлин, потом Париж, а потом Кома. Ну а как же? Что же я за еврей, если свою собственность так просто возьму и оставлю? Не, это не все вернуть придется. That's a terribly bold claim, given that Russia has taken quite a while to capture two Ukrainian towns in the Donbass. Okay, time for a little experiment. Many Russia understanders will balk at any attempts to see Moscow in a negative light because of the mythical. Russian culture. Let's see how this works in practice. At a very basic level, no ballet, no poetry here, just an ordinary household appliance left out in the open. I imagine some of you can already see where this is going. So, a self-service coffee machine was installed in a Russian shopping mall. But wouldn't you know it, soon enough people stole everything there was to steal from the machine. Paper cups, sugar packets, even straws. To be perfectly honest, I still kind of can't believe that the coffee machine itself was not stripped for parts and stolen too. What if some chips inside there could be dual-use items, say for an FPV drone? Missed opportunity, guys. Okay, moving on. One of our favorite Russian propagandists, Margarita Simonian, has recently posted a video in which she claimed that she still holds a grudge against Alexei Navalny, even after his death. Why is that so? Well, according to her, the stress brought on by the massive anti-corruption investigation she was a target in, and which he inspired, brought about her miscarriage. Navalny stole me the life of my unborn child, and for me and all of our family. Было горе, трагедия для земли, для семьи, как любая подобная потеря. Я была беременна. Они готовили против меня очередной какой-то, не знаю, даже как это назвать, ну какое-то ведро помой. Ладно бы еще правду, безусловно, вранье, как они всегда делают, что я рожала в Штатах, где я, конечно же, не рожала. Беременность была у меня тяжелая, была угроза выкидыша. Я об этом публично написала, и я знаю, что они об этом знали. Просто как бы, ну, попросила, что ли, насколько может таких людей просить, дайте мне родить. А там уж, пожалуйста, продолжайте поливать помоями. Ну, они не стали ждать, выкатили это все. Я разнервничалась, у меня случился выкидыш. Ребеночек мой, я даже не знаю, мальчик был это или девочка, не родился. Виновник этой трагедии в нашей семье умер. Все, что я могу по этому поводу сказать, теперь с ним будет разбираться Господь. It's impossible to say whether she's telling the truth or not. She's an expert in the mass manufacturing of untruths, after all. Maybe after Navalny's death, she grew scared and is now looking to get her fellow Russians to feel sorry for her. But one question lingers in our minds. Why won't she think of all the Ukrainian women who miscarried since Russia invaded their homeland, all the children killed or abducted in Ukraine in a war she's cheering on in exchange for blood money from the Kremlin? But we're supposed to feel sorry for her. Well, that's not the way it works. At least we know what Russians will be doing in the near future. If, for example, another Russian warship sinks to the bottom of the Black Sea, 
They can blame Alexei Navalny for that. And with this, we end this episode of Break the Fake. Please stay with us here on TVP World for more latest news and updates.